Hey guys, it's Jamie here and today we're going to go from a piece of scrap paper that you have no use for, this for some bizarre reason is peanuts, to something that you might actually want to use on your junk journals and this is a four way or a quadruple tag that would go in pockets and I will show you how it works. You open it that way, you have a little one there so it's layered this way and that way and I'm going to take you through making the background and adding the elements to it and putting it together. Look what Emma sent me! She sent me because she has a cricket, is it? A circuit? One of the cutters. So to save me because I spend hours cutting up things because I don't have one so you can see I spend forever cutting things up so to save me cutting up a load of stuff she sent me everything from the paper dolls kit therefore in honor of that don't forget there is one free printable sheet in group but there is a whole kit you can purchase from Etsy I will put the link in the description of the video to celebrate this spares <laughs> awesome I love paper dolls anyway. I'm going to make a little layered tag booklet. I want to do that because it's something you could either send individually or you could add it to a junk journal as a piece of ephemera in a big pocket. I have more scrapbook paper that I really don't like very much and I've got some spare paper here, some scraps from recent projects and we are going to cover it masterboard style which means I need some glue. I've basically run out of Mod Podge so I'm now using plain white PVA glue mixed with a bit of water so what I do is I overlap a little bit I don't care whether they match or don't match because I often treat things after I've done this anyway so for me, it's just a question of cover the space as quickly as possible with different layers. This is quite thin scrapbooking paper, so it will make it more card-like. So you can see not a lot is going into planning this. It is just anything. You can tell I really don't care about matching things. Go over it with a top layer of the glue to make sure everything is down and also sealed against any paint process I want to do to it. So top layer, a bit more water this time so it goes over nice and quick and smooth. The next thing I want to do is to go over this paper with some white gesso. You can use any white paint. I'm deliberately going to knock back very patterned material, stuff that isn't really going to fit what I believe the feel of this is going to be. So that definitely won't fit. That will, that won't fit. I don't think that's. Don't think that will either. You notice I'm not doing it necessarily particularly evenly. Some bits are thicker than others. I am getting most of this paper covered to some degree or other. I have a very small selection of watercolour crayons. I have a brown, a mustard, a black, a white. These are just the cheapest that had a reasonable review on Amazon. I am going to scrub along around this edge in the dark. Now, because I'm making tags out of this, we're going to do this at various intervals. So we're going to take these lines where these squares of different paper are and follow those. I'm going to take some water and start to get that to spread off those lines. Use my finger, admittedly, but also get some water on there. It helps with the spreading. Now I have my little hot air gun. I'm going to dry that off. So now we go again but we go with the mustard colour and this time not necessarily following it all over, just scrubbing in a 
scribble pattern if I feel I need to wet this I will and I do feel it's a bit hard to manipulate it so I'm going to give it a bit of help the next one I'm going to use is going to be the black and I'm just going to see if I smudge it in here along these lines Am I going to get an effect I like? And I think I might. Yeah, I quite like that. So I'm going to work around this paper and smudge along those joins of those papers. I'm beginning to really like this effect. I like where the white is pu pushing through. So I am going to try adding a bit of white to this just to bring out a bit more. Sometimes when you're doing something like this, it's good to stand back to see the effect that you're getting and whether you want to up it a bit. I'm liking the effect of the white and the colours going out to the black. That's cool as far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't mind a slightly stronger white. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white gesso and where I've put some white using watercolour, I'm now going to try to see if I can get that highlight a bit stronger by using the paint rather than the crayon. Okay and again standing back from it take a look. I'm liking those colours so far definitely. Part of me is thinking about peeled paint and whether that's going to add to it or not. So because I don't know Peeled paint is a distress ink. What I will do is get a little bit and test it. Peeled paint is a green distress ink, but it's quite a dark green. And I just want to see if it's going to add to this. I think it does. Don't necessarily want to go overboard with it. Now this may be too bright for this. It may work, it may not. So we're going to again test it in the corner and see. Actually, I think it does work because I think what we're getting here, this is salvage patina distress ink, is almost um, a rusty effect. Yeah, quite like that as well. There is actually a distress ink called Rusty Hinge, and I happen to have it. It's actually quite orange. How that's gonna look? Yeah, that's also working quite well. The big risk is going to be protecting this because it is going to get wet again, whatever I use. But I am going to go with hairspray because it's slightly less contact than using another glaze of some sort whether it's a matte medium varnish or a, a watered down glue so i'm going to come quite a bit away yes i am going to get this wet because it's distressing it will react to getting wet and watercolor but i'm hoping it's going to react in a good way not a bad way but now whew, highly flammable and needs to dry now this is all dry and stable and protected and not sticky, which is good. I'm going to stain up some of this because I'd like to use what I normally throw away as part of the design. So I am going to go over the areas that I want to use, which is going to be the areas with some markings on them, with some Distress Photo ink because that fits the theme of what we're doing. This is going to be available for me to tear at when we decorate the tags. The other day in a video I showed how similar in thickness this greaseproof paper is to tracing paper and therefore it can be used instead of tracing paper and I think would work out cheaper. You can see you get some nice crease lines here as well. You could do it more. You could scrunch it up unscrunch it and then you're going to get even more lines picking up the ink as you go over it. The next stage with this is I want to cut two tags the same size 
and two tags that are different sizes. Here's my four tags. So I have one this size, one taller, and then two the same. To cut the tags, if you've not seen any of my videos before, I simply have a cut down store card and I can use that on virtually any size and get the same angles. I've just found that easier. On the reverse, because this was scrapbook paper, so yeah, it's got a bit of staining from paint, but not too bad. I'm going to distress ink it so it looks a little older. I will start at the edges and then work in from the corners. The idea is as the ink fades, you have less ink it covers slightly less deeply. That would replicate wear. Wear would always be on your edges and corners first, like excessive finger grease and things like that. On this side, I will take a permanent black ink. I have my stays on, which is quite a strong black ink. Because I have these black borders, I'm not going to try and use vintage photo look. It stains so quickly. And the reason for doing this is it will frame like you would frame a picture, the features of the tag when we put them on. I'm back to do a bit of decorating of the tags. Have a bit of this parchment paper and a script stamp and a permanent ink stamp. Pop that on there. Awesome. One thing that's in Emma's kit is she's put lots of little extras so you can dress your paper people up. I will try to do that a little bit and I do want to create a background for them. For a background I'm thinking the usual labels, tickets, that type of thing. I want the grungier looking ones. For example we've got this one. Let's start with this guy. First thing I'm going to tear a bit of this background and see how much of this we want to use. Probably half, possibly stain it again, just along the edges. I think the way to get the edges of this is going to be to do it flat. And we can have that somewhere behind him, along with maybe another piece. So I might take that ticket and put that down first. For those interested in the UK, this is Aqua Tombo Mono Liquid Glue. I love using it because of that tip. It runs really quickly and is quite strong. I found the cheapest way to buy it was in bulk and I got it from Amazon. I'm just creating a few little layers behind him. How's that looking? Right, we're not really seeing that second one unless we bring him slightly off the page. We'd lose a bit of his foot. I'm not too worried about that. Might bring him down a bit. And then we could potentially get some kind of word up here. We could have it at the bottom. Yeah, I'm more tempted to put that at the bottom. I've moved to the silicon glue Fabri-Tac because it was struggling to stick. Now that might be the lacquer, the hair lacquer, the hair spray topping. I'm not sure. I have this, which is some Amazon packaging. I'm going to put that up there. All we're doing is adding layers and textures to this. Something I might do, because this is all one tone, is come in on this and tone it up a little bit with again a vintage photo because it's a grungy look we're going for. And if you wanted to, you could spray that with a bit of water and move it around a bit more. I'm okay with that. Okay, how am I feeling? I feel that's okay. I might outline him in the white gel pen anyway. Bits that I want to pop a little bit more. Basically, very, very carefully, gonna go round the edge of the fussy cut. Okay, maybe that's the one we didn't need, but I can rub it. I like it with the edging. It makes him pop a little bit more. And I think that one is now done. They're all done, let's put them together to make this trifold, quadruple fold tag. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna call it. So I'm gonna take some scrap 
and make a hinge with it then it's going to attach at the back of this one and the back of this one put it on here and then attach this one to here I can trim it up in a minute I'll move this inner one in alignment with a small not quite up to the fold run some glue along here and pull it over now have I managed to do that right yay I have okay cool now we want one for here again we want one to go because this has been edged in black if you feel that hinging is showing through just re-edge it and then yet again we don't have to put it at the bottom we can put it anywhere now with this one we could hinge it so that it comes over the whole lot and then you'd have one two three same principle slightly bigger hinge run it along there and then run this one down the back of this one leaving a slightly bigger gap this time so that it has the space to hinge over so that is our little four-way tag with people and some fun little extras it opens that way it opens that way it opens that way and it opens that way and i would suggest it goes in the pocket or can be sent as a piece of little happy mail if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up let me know what you think in the comments i have well over 250 videos now on my channel in the last nine months obviously i upload really really regularly so if you're looking for fresh content please consider subscribing and hitting that notifications bell and i will see you next time